Hello and welcome to another free live session hosted by Switch On Health. If you're watching this recording on the YouTube channel and you would like to help support us in our mission to make natural health available to everyone, please hit that subscribe button because the more subscribers we have, the more we can offer. Within the next few days, children all around the country are going to be heading back to school. And it's not just children, it is adults also. Some adults will be starting university at the same time, some will be going back to university, and some people <coughs> will take advantage of the new year to start new studies, and it might be the first time that they're studying in decades. Now, some people love the idea of going back to school and they just can't wait for others. Going back to school brings up all sorts of emotions, uh, but the good news is, natural therapies can help. So whether you are a five-year-old about to start your very first day of school ever, um, or if you're a 50-year-old and you're contemplating a career change and you're a little bit worried because you haven't studied in a while, the good news is that natural therapies can help you to succeed and excel and make the most of any situation. Uh, this, of course, is also a great topic for those of us that have children and we can see our children go going through these different states and to have something that is effective in helping them manage that um, is just wonderful. So to talk to you about some of those remedies we have with us tonight, experienced nutritionist and homeopath, Sally Maisie. So without further ado, over to you, Sally. Awesome, thanks Martin. Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, I hope you got through Christmas and the new year well. As Martin said, uh, we are starting back to school in the next couple of weeks. Um, and so therefore, you know, it, it, it is or can be traumatic for some, but it can be exciting for others. So, you know, we can see the happy little kitties on their way back to school, but then we've also got the anxious teenagers that potentially don't wish to go back at all. So I've um, put together three remedies and some little supportive strategies that will help uh, with that back to school sort of, you know, angst. So the first thing we need to consider is uh, we need to think, you know, it can be quite exciting, it can be fearful, it can be quite happy, it's, you know, uh, an experience that can be preconceived depending on what they've heard from others. Um, and there's several things that you might find that your children, your, you know, teenagers, your significant others, whether they're going back to uni, uh, may suffer from. So some of the things are stage fright, which we'll have gelsenium for, exhaustion, which is Calic Foss, you know, imagine your little kindy kid that's running around all day. They're probably going to be pretty exhausted by the end of the day. And then finally, there is that uh, lycopodium sort of remedy for self-confidence, uh, because a lot of people sort of <coughs> go into new situations feeling that they're not confident at all. So let's start with gelsenium. So you know, stage fright, a little bit paralyzing, you can be a little bit trembly, you can sort of have some memory loss. There's, you know, those sort of um, paralyzing, sort of anxious, nervous, panicked type aspects. Gelsenium is known as the courage remedy or, or the great paralyzer, depending on whether you want to see it as it's going to give you courage or whether it's going to sort of put you into a state of, you know, think about it, there's a bit of adrenaline running through you, um, freeze, you know, where you feel this real bodily heaviness, this real weakness. Um, you can see there that it's also known as, you know, yellow jasmine from the Loganaceae family. Um, but uh, when we look at first aid, we can practice. Practice for, you know, anything, whether it be speech, whether it be, <clears throat> you know, you've got to do a show and tell, whether you've got to get up in front of people and do a song. Um, practicing in front of others, you know, like your family, can be a good thing. Uh, there is a company called Toastmasters, and they're a public speaking group that you can join and they'll teach you the art of public speaking. But there's also breathing exercises, you know, things like breathing in for four, one, two, three, four, and then out for four, one, two, three, four. With this particular one, um, 
I've got a 30C potency because that's a little bit of mental, emotional and physical. It'll deal with those sort of aspects and symptoms. And we are looking at it QD, which is four times a day. Now that is the day before the event and then the day of the event, okay? And just to let you know that gelsenium is also one of the main remedies for flu and also one of the main remedies for fear of the dentist. That's just a little sideline for you. I'm not gonna go through all the sort of stranger epiculias, mental and emotional, generals, worst falls, etc. but I'll give you a sort of image of it. You know, there's this sense of having a big head, like this huge, big, enlarged head. And it feels as though the skin in the forehead is quite contracted. So not only do you have this big head, but there's this tightening of the, of the forehead. And it's for, uh, you know, any sort of upcoming event. So it's a little bit different, as you can see that I've said, I've said Arj Nit. Arj Nit is the weeks prior to an event. So, you know, you, you're all sort of nervous weeks ahead of time. This one is just the day before or the day of. And it's all sorts of things. So, you know, whether you're anxious about sitting an exam, whether you're anxious about meeting new friends, friends at school, you know, it's all about, essentially, it's all about you've lost control, you're not in control yet. So therefore, you, you have those difficulties. Generally, thirstless, as it says, and there's this dislike for some thunderstorms, as I've said before, you know, your generals, uh, weather patterns and clothes patterns, etc, etc. Sides, that sort of thing. Uh, physicals, nervous diarrhea. I think, you know, many people have either suffered from wanting to wee before an event or potentially having loose bowels before an event. And in this case, unfortunately, the bowels can be quite involuntary, which, which could be quite embarrassing, I would, uh, would suspect. Uh, the headache that comes with this gelsenium is at the back of the head, may extend to that forehead, and as it says, it tied around the head. Worst at 10 o'clock better for open air and and a good one there is you know after and during profuse urination so they feel better having had a pee so maybe you know when they're really anxious they go oh i think i'm going to wet myself go off have a pee come back you'll feel better so that's gelsenium very quick very sweet it's a lovely little um remedy and i said before good one for the flu next one <clears throat> I'm going to delve a little into the tissue salts. In this case, it's caliphos, so potassium phosphate, essentially. And again, this one is for exhaustion, you know, when there's fatigue, where there's lethargy, so no energy, where they want to just sleep, yeah? Um, and, and although fatigue is a symptom of many disorders, fatigue can also just be due to lack of sleep or emotional disruptions. You know, if you think about the first day of school, quite emotional, think about your first day at uni, you know, again, quite emotional. Um, and then, you know, it can just be from something simple as having a very big meal, you could feel quite tired. Uh, Caliphos in particular is one of our biochemicals, so it is within the body naturally, but when we're depleted of it, uh, as you can see there, it works on the brain and the nerves and the muscles and the blood. If we don't have those within, if we don't have this potassium phosphate within the body, then we can be, you know, sort of losing forms per se. First aid wise, supportive strategies wise, foods high in potassium, so your bananas, high in phosphorus, your nuts. So, you know, having a good smoothie at the end of the, you know, an end of a day or having a smoothie before you start your day with some bananas and some nuts in it, really good for your health. Uh, the big thing here though is for little people in particular, practicing good bedtimes. You know, uh, I can remember my mum always used to have me in bed by 8.30. I hated it, even when I was a teenager. But uh, look, put it this way, I, I did pretty well at school. Uh, in addition to that, um, you know, I also got good sleep. So it's about getting a routine. It's about having, you know, well, unfortunately, these days in my day, there were no electrics to take to bed with yourself. Uh, these days, it's about leaving the phone outside. Uh, with this particular one, I tend to use the lower potencies. The reason being is because the 6C is quite physical and exhaustion can be quite physical. It's not necessarily an emotional thing. Sure, we have our, 
you know, we're, we're sleeping, we can become irritated, but, you know, you can use this as often as, you know, every 15 minutes. If it does become quite an emotional exhaustion, then you can use your higher potencies of 200C or 1M. Kelly Foss, just so that you know, also is one of our jet lag remedies. So it's that real sort of, you know, feeling of, ooh, blah, you know. It's good, stranger and peculiar. Although they want to be alone, that's the symbol for desires to be alone. They are worse for being alone. So they, you know, their symptoms become worse when they are alone. Um, this one's a really good one for brain fog or brain fag where you've been sitting in front of a computer for so, so long that the sentence that you've read, you've read six or seven times. And believe me, that happened to me quite often uh, when I was studying and, uh, and Kelly Foss was always my go-to. Um, that scrambled inability to concentrate, as it says, you know. It's also a really good one for little people in night terrors. If they're having night terrors about going to school, if they have this feeling of dread before they go to school, you know. Craving cold iced water, there's some cutting pains involved. Uh, it could be a crushing headache. So this is a top one to the right eye. This is a right-sided remedy. Um, some gnawing, you know, hunger pains. So, you know, always feed the Cali Foss child. It's always good. But they're worse for dairy or milk in particular. Um, and better for, you know, maybe coming home and just having a short nap, you know. Um, that could be the way to go. So that is your Cali Foss. So again, that's the one for exhaustion and that real brain fag, that real sort of study brain where you just go, oh, I can't do it anymore. I'm staring at nothing. Next one that we move on to is uh, a really lovely one, which is called Lycopodium, um, you know, also known as club moss or lamb's tail or foxtail, you know, and again, that's that sort of um, uh, what it looks like is what it becomes. But this one is for the self-confidence, the, you know, lack of self-confidence for, this, for the, the, the child, the teenager, the adult that feels inferior or unworthy um that real sort of uh I look you know especially the older adult that's going back to school for the very first time in say 20 something years and they think oh my god i don't think i'm clever enough or i don't have the intellect intellectual abilities to do so um there is a sort of performance anxiety with this so it is sort of similar to that gelsenium but it's all about new things it's all about being quite shy um in front of others but it is a, a really big remedy of opposites the lycopodium because it's so little club moss is so little it's like we describe it as like a um they're a little fish in a big pond, but they want to be that big fish. So they might be quite shy in front of authority, so in front of teachers. They might feel quite cowardly, low confidence, you know, all of that sort of thing in front of teachers. But they get home and they're an absolute horror. They're this, you know, sort of bullying, um, haughty temper tantrum any type child at home whereas you know you hear everything from their teachers going oh yes Susie is just so absolutely delightful and lovely and she gets home and she's an absolute horror yeah so this is the one that you can think of uh, first aid uh, supportive strategies again um, a good protein breakfast, um, some vitamin B sort of foods in that protein breakfast. So, you know, again, your nuts, your smoothies, that sort of thing. Um, you know, eggs and veggies. Um, maybe some counselling might be in order. But it's all about keeping those communication channels open, you know, really talking to your children as to, you know, what's going on and how they're feeling. One of the sort of cycles from a homeopathic perspective, which is pretty important, is this sort of calcium or kelp carb, sulfur, lycopodium sort of cycle. And um, I can talk about that in, in a lot more detail at a very uh, later sort of webinar, but it, it's a really important one because they sort of go in and out of these different remedies and it's, it's still constitutional prescribing. But this is for this, this little person that's feeling very low, very sort of, you know, I, I'm worthless. Strange around peculiar here is that one foot will feel cold and the other foot will feel warm, which is, you know, quite typical of this, this remedy um, and a good strange around peculiar. But it's that real inferiority, you know, and yet they can be quite rude when they're at home. As it says there, tyrant at home, an angel at school. Um, in saying that, then at home, they lack 
discipline, they lack willpower. So they have this tendency to be quite excessive. Um, and, and it's because they're feeling so overwhelmed by so many things going on. Uh, the little people will potentially dream of monsters, you know, ghosts, strangers. Um, starts right sided, moves on to the left side, fairly gradual in its onset. So, you know, it might not be in the first couple of weeks of school, might not be till first term or, you know, second term when they sort of go, oh, I don't want to go back to school. And this one's a really good one for those that are quite windy, so very excessively flatulent, that sort of butterflies in, in stomach feeling, yeah? Um, you know, where they could in fact be quite nauseous and, and even vomit. <clears throat> Headache goes from one side to another. Notice I, I, I did headaches this time so that you can see that headaches vary so that you get used to, you know, when you're when you next get a headache. Not so I'm not that I'm wishing that upon anyone, but when you potentially next get a headache, you know, note where it starts, note what it feels like, note to all those things because that could be a different remedy. And this is a really good one, like a podium also for that that headache that the teenagers may get because they've missed a meal or they're craving some sugar or, you know, they have those irregular meal times. Again, I've, I've put some emphasis on times here. So four to eight, think about that. Four to eight is when we finish school and uh, when we're, before we, you know, um, while we're having dinner. So, you know, you can tell there that, you know, if they're not eating right, um, there could be some issues. And they're better for warm drinks. So, you know, uh, warm milk might be the way to go. They're the, first, they're the three remedies. I've put in as well some sort of little supportive strategies that's really important when we go back to, to sort of school. Um, you know, obviously things like soups and stews and smoothies are really good. Soft things that don't have to be chewed but are really, really nourishing because they, you find that when new things happen, you've got this heightened sense of adrenaline pumping through you. Um, a really good book, and I'll show you what it looks like in a minute, is called The Chemical Maze. Um, eating good whole food is good, not the stuff with all the processed sort of numbers within it. Uh, this particular, the chemical maze, gives you information about those numbers and how dangerous some of them can be. Um, Bounce Foods, uh, that's a little website there and I'll talk you through a drink that I think is quite good for little people. And then meditation, you know, um, getting into the routine of maybe having a little meditation when they come home from school. I noticed quite a few schools are now actually um, using meditation within their, within their classrooms, but this is one for kids uh, as well. And, you know, there's certainly many, many YouTube clips on uh, good meditation for kids at school. But this is what the chemical maze looks like. You can get it in an app. You can get it in, in hard form um, or electronic form. Uh, this is the superfood that I was talking about. Now, this is what it looks like. These are the people that also do the protein balls. But this is what's in it. So you can see that there's nothing really nasty in it. Um, it's all fairly natural. There is a fair bit of, you know, sugars. There is... So, you know, there's a, an amount of carbs in it, but what weighs out with that is the fact that there's a fairly good amount of sort of, you know, protein and fibre as well, and not too much sodium. You know, compare this particular drink to something like Sustagen, and, you know, Sustagen is just yuck. Sorry, but it is. Uh, Finally, meditation for kids, you know, sort of this is a book for for meditating for kids. But as I said, there's also YouTube clips and everything else as well. Uh, that's me done, you'll find, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I think Martin's probably got uh, a few things to add to it as well um, with some herbs and some uh, some flower essences. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's me done, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you get to use some of those remedies. Awesome. Thanks, Sally. Pleasure. Uh, so if anybody's got any questions, um, we are happy to answer questions. If you're watching this on the YouTube channel, we're also welcome to stick your questions down below and we will reply to them. Or you can just contact us at Switch On Health. Check out our website, switchonhealth.com.au. Send us an email, info at switchonhealth.com.au. We will reply to everyone. Unless, of course, we get 10 gazillion people. Um, but I don't think that's very likely. And uh, in my experience, usually what happens is that people think, oh, 
they're never going to get back to me because I'm just one person. But trust me, uh, we actually love it when people contact us and ask questions and we love helping people and um, in, a, in any way we can. So, um, yeah, if you've got any questions, please do stick them into the chat box. But in the meantime, uh, just let's have a chat about some of those things, uh, some of the remedies that Sally discussed. So, um, gelsenium, look, really interesting about stage fright. You know, I've seen so many people that have had to present, you know, they've been in a position, you know, maybe they've got a senior position in the company or something like that. Um, and yeah, they really need to go to Toastmasters uh, or do something to help them. And, you know, the whole audience always, you could almost feel everybody's heart breaking for these people if they're standing up on stage and then they freeze and they forget what they were supposed to say and that sort of thing. Um, now, a funny thing about um, talking in public is that, um, you know, when you ask somebody, you know, like, how do you feel about speaking in public? A lot of people will say they're absolutely terrified, they're petrified, you know, they, you know, they're, they're, it's like their biggest fear, you know, and if you ask people um, if they're afraid of death or dying, um, sure, it's something that people don't usually want to experience uh, sooner than expected, um, but people aren't as afraid of dying as they are of public speaking, usually, you know, public speaking is the one that really, like, oh my gosh, I can't do that, you know, um, so in a sense, people would actually rather die than speak in public. So, you know, if there's a remedy that helps with that, like Jill said, and, um, you know, it's, it's fantastic. Um, so we've got a question You've here. You've got a question there, Martin. Uh, so the question is, anything that is particularly useful for a preschooler with sensory processing disorder and separation anxiety? Wow. Yeah. Wow, what so a juicy I'd, I'd question. Be, yeah, I'd be more inclined to maybe look at ArchNet for that one, that's that one that we did for Christmas prior to, which is silver. Um, if you're going to give it to a little person, I'd be more inclined to maybe look at a 30C and just a morning, night, morning dose potentially. But yeah, I, I'd be thinking Arjnit might be the one. I'd need to know a bit more about what sort of physical, emotional, um, symptoms that the, the little person feels, but uh, Arjnit is the other one where they're nervous and quite hypersensitive. It's quite a hypersensitive rem remedy, yeah. Good stuff. So that one's in our pre That one's in the Christmas video, right. yeah, Christmas yeah. webinar. Yep. Yeah, so if you uh, if you haven't already watched that one, it's on our YouTube channel. Have a look. <coughs> um, it's a great session. I really I really enjoyed that one. That was Sally's best work. Some of her best work. <laughs> Thanks, I hope it's not my best work. That sounds past tense, but anyway, <laughs> um, you were you were going to talk about a few herbs and flower essences, Martin. Uh, oh, I did of, say I might. Yeah. I, yeah, sure. Uh, one of one of the things one of the things that I I like to talk about because um, you could consider this for your preschooler as well, especially um, the seeing as it's in the name. It's one of the bark flowers, you know, and it's over overwhelmed if someone's feeling very overwhelmed the bark flower that's in there is called elm yeah um, elm is quite a quite a good one in terms of that person that feels like they want to help other people but don't know how to help other people um, yeah so that's that one and uh, martin's just put up As aspen for anxiety um, rescue remedy sure um, do you want to put elm up there as well for overwhelmed martin but uh, that's that's another one that that you can consider. There's also the one called uh, Croia, which is one of the Australian bush flower essences, and Croia is the warrior, you know. So that's how you, that's how I remember it is Quarry, Qu Croia, sorry, warrior. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of the ways I remember that, especially if your little preschooler is quite, oh, I'm worried that something might happen while I'm away from you. Um, but separate, separation anxiety, one of the biggest ones, especially if there's that feeling of abandonment, um, pulsatilla. It's, it's a classic children's homeopathic, uh, especially if the bubber is sort of quite clingy, 
quite can, can have a tendency to look quite lovely with you know blonde hair and blue eyes and uh, uh, but can have a bit of a little manipulative little streak that could uh, sort of you know ma knows how to twist mum and dad around their little fingers sort of thing you know um, but they're quite a weepy child um, but it, it's that feeling the main thing with pulsatilla is that oh, well I feel as though I'm being abandoned you know so that could be that separation anxiety as well um, there's there's many remedies that I could talk about, but uh, but there's a few. So what I'm hearing here is that um, really it'd be a good idea to go and see a naturopath or a homeopath and um, right. yeah get uh, get the right get remedy the or the right, the right treatment. Yeah, yeah, get the case taken. You know, as as I always say, you know, there is not one remedy for one disorder. There is only one remedy for each patient. That's a lot of remedies. Yeah. yeah. That's it. So, um, yeah, I think uh, with with something like that, I mean, um, aspen is just a good uh, a good remedy for anxiety. Rescue remedy is, is just, you know, you can't go wrong when in doubt. Give rescue remedy. You know, you can't hurt somebody on it. You can't overdose on it. If it's not the right thing for them, it just won't do anything. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Herbs for study, um, so um, herbal medicines um, is something that Sally hasn't talked about a lot. Um, but there are some fantastic herbs for study um, and uh, improving, <laughs> in, in, improving cognition. Um, and, you know, these herbs can be used for all ages. You know, you've just got to you know, make sure you're using the right dose. Um, now, a lot of people have heard of ginkgo. You know, that's like a sort of famous study herb you know ginkgo is good for the memory it's good for the brain it's good for getting your um uh you know your, your circulation and your oxygen going to the brain more um now i i think it goes great you know but i tend to think of ginkgo uh for being good for uh people that are older um because as we get older we don't have such good circulation and so promoting that circulation to the brain uh ginkgo for me it's it's great great herb for people as they're aging. Um, now, if you're at school, um, if you're studying, you know, my, my top pick, I think, for university students, for example, is a herb called um, Bacopa monnieri. Um, its common name is uh, Brahmi, or it might, all just, might also just be called Bacopa. Um, and uh, it's a fantastic herb to, you know, help you concentrate, um, improve your cognition. You know, it actually kind of helps your neurons to synapse with each other. Uh, yeah, it's an amazing herb for cognition and memory and study. Um, and I can't believe, you know, we don't learn about this stuff in school. You know, we go through 10, 12 years of school uh, and then probably university as well. And nobody, you know, it's, it's very rare that people say to you, hey, look, you know, this is what you can do to actually be a great student and, Make it easier on yourself. Why wouldn't we make it easier, you know? One of the other things, Martin, obviously, is for little people, if they're feeling a bit anxious, um, a chamomile tea is always good because at least it's calming and soothing. Uh, throw, in that, throw in there some passion flower and maybe some skull cap and you've got some nice sort of, you know, sleep herbs as well. You can get, and I think they still do do it, but it's by a company called Red Seal, and they do a, a, a tea combination with, with those three things in it. And I think it might have a little bit of catnip in it as well. But it's perfectly okay for little people. I'd be concerned if you were giving it to like a under a sort of four year old, but um, you know, even then, just a weak sort of steeped tea with a little bit of honey in it might, uh, might be okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I was also thinking before, just, just getting back to gel simian, you know, it's um, it's interesting what you said about that involuntary incontinence that can happen. Um, you know, it's, it's just yeah. that classic fear reaction, you know, when we're in that fight or flight state. Um, and of course, in evolutionary terms, you know, if, if you're an animal and there's a, a lion or something that's running towards you to about to eat you, you know, a good way of making yourself unpalatable and less appealing to the lion is pardon my language, to shit yourself um, because who wants to eat that, you know? So that's why the lion will just, oh, okay, I'm going to run after this other one instead. So, um, yeah, that's, that's why it and happens. Especially, 
especially if you're a hippopotamus, you know, they do it in like sort of swells and circles so that it's sort of, you know, sort of fans out from themselves. That's why not many hippos get done by, you know, lions. Is that so? I mean, I've, I've, yeah. I went to Dubbo Zoo and I do remember seeing the helicopter shit. Yeah, yeah. helicopter <laughs> shit. That's it. Yeah, but I but, didn't um, know that, Yeah, so. no, gelsenium is a good remedy. One of the other things that uh, with the caliphosphate, and it can be paired with magnesium phosphate, and then it becomes a really good one for... Um, for anxiety and nerves and nervous tension, you know, I, I often describe the magfos anxiety as that real tense person that's about to sort of, you know, explode or kill their husband or whatever. Whereas the caliphos person is the anxiety with exhaustion. So you've got those two types of anxiety there. One's really tense. And whenever I feel hear people say, you know, I'm tense, I'm about to you know, burst. I, I think of maybe even magnesium sulfur, and uh, and and they can just have an Epsom salt bath, and that'll calm themselves down. Yeah, but uh, I often put magnesium phosphate and uh, caliphosphate together, or potassium phosphate together. It's a really nice one for gentle one for little people. Yeah, it sounds great. I really get that picture of you know, like the the student that falls asleep on their desk with a big pile of books yeah. and. Yeah, that's they it. just study the themselves Cali-Foss. into the ground. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah that's the Califos. Whereas the Magfos is that person who, you know, uh, maybe have a deadline and they're doing their exams late at night and uh, and they just, uh, they're so wired and so tense that they, they're just ready to kill every person that they're living with. Yeah. yeah, I think I think we all know these people. You know, this is this is what I love about yeah. these remedies. You know, when you're describing them, you know, like when you described like a podium. You know, the kid that's like grumpy at home. I, I think we all know a kid like that, or maybe yeah. we were one. You know, or a kid that's that's a bit of a bully at home. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Difficult. But like like a podium, like a podium has been described as that sort of small man syndrome. Yeah. Not that I'm got anything against small men, but uh, there's something that where they they need to or want to or have to achieve something great, and they'll do anything they can to do it. So they might be a little bit sort of you know um, dastardly about it potentially. Yeah. So in front of in front of their peers, they seem quite superior, but in front of their authority, they seem quite inferior. They're probably they're very much that sort of yes, yes, no problem, yes, yes, I'll do that, boss, yes, 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 and then they'll go away and they might sort of you know say to their peers, oh, you know, he's just a bastard. Yeah, I think I think a lot of us, you know, we've maybe had a brother or sister that's like that and we're like can't you see what's happening can't yeah. you see what they do when Mom, you, as soon as your back is that's turned it. you know and then, and then you get told right. don't tell tales you know yeah yeah yeah. sometimes better to be an lonely, only child anyway. yeah. <laughs> yeah but um <coughs> that uh that um drink as well that bounce drink that we that i showed before that's really really lovely because uh, it can be put into any sort of you know milk of any sort whether it be an almond milk or a rice milk or an oat milk you know an oat milk if it's soothing for the belly um but um but it was something that i've also used on my father when he had bad dementia and he wasn't getting the right nourishment and he was getting that sustagen and the sustagen continued to just give him diarrhea which was not very good because he had involuntary bowels um so he had that bowel incontinence Continence. and and whenever he had the sustagen you know he, he, and my father used to be an ex-army colonel where you know prior to his death and he was quite a proud man and to have to sort of shit himself was was not a very dignified way for him so when I introduced this bounce it it reduced a lot of that uh, a lot of that diarrhea and that involuntary diarrhea and it just gave him some really good nourishment and I know that they've got it on special at the moment for 10 bucks when it's normally 29. That sounds like a bargain. Cool. Buy up, buy up. Yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. know how long they'll have it for, but it's, it's on at the moment. That's for sure. So we've got about 
two minutes left, two and a half minutes left. Um, so if anybody does have any more questions, please do feel free to type them in. Um, and we should also have a think about uh, what our next session is going to be on. Um, you know, the two things I thought of, you know, were uh, learning difficulties. You know, we could do a session on that. Uh, we could also do a session on effective study techniques. You know, this session today really was more for the emotional uh, apprehension that some people might get, um, you know, in, in that going back to school transition. Um, but yeah, uh, effective study techniques, who wouldn't benefit from that? Uh, I've already talked about a couple of the herbs that are useful for that. Um, if you do have any topics you would like us to cover in these sessions, um, please do let us know, email us or stick that comment uh, below if you're watching us on YouTube and we'll see if we can do a session on it. Sounds great. I'm there. You tell me when I'm there. Excellent. <laughs> well, uh, I think we might wrap it up with 90 sure. seconds to go. So um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this session as much as we've enjoyed presenting it. Please do tune in to the next one. And as I said, get in touch. Um, we're always happy to hear from you. Uh, any closing words from you, Sally? Uh, no, just, you know, hug your kids when they get home from school. Hug whomever it is that's had their first day and uh, tell them they had a great day, even though it wasn't. Wise words. Sounds good. I think we could have all done with a bit more of that when we were kids. Yeah, that's it. A good hug. Okay, well, uh, let's sign off. Uh, thank you again for watching and we hope to see you at the next one. Learn more with Switch On Health.